Hello YouTube, I'm coming to you from my local Harris Farm Shop where I've uh, come to check out the macadamias that are on sale here. These are almost certainly style zero, which is the high end style you can buy, mostly or nearly all whole kernels of a reasonable size. Could possibly be style one. And the price, $45 a kilo. And um, that price hasn't really changed. Um, particularly over the last year when macadamia prices have been falling and in fact over two years the price at the retail end has always been pretty much the same about $45 a kilo you come over to the shelves here and you can get 350 grams of macadamias for $18.99 and I think buying them this way is actually a little bit more expensive than buying them loose over though we've got a special here 350 grams for $14.99 so it does work out roughly roughly about the same high $40 a kilo for this particular one I'm not even sure that's style zero because there's some pieces and halves in there um, which may mean it's a slightly lower cheaper style so what's going on the macadamia price to growers has dropped substantially two years in a row and yet the retail price is the same um, I discussed this a bit in my last video, but the focus of this video is going to be a bit more on the grower prices and how uh, the growers manage that relationship with their nut processors. So I'll get out of this cheesy music and um, we can talk some more business. In front of a screen now, and what I thought I'd show you guys was the idea of the notional prices that some nut processors still used to offer to macadamia farmers now i'd have to say that the majority of them now have moved to a fixed price model where that's easily understood by the layperson you're offered three dollars eighty for your nuts and three dollars eighty is what you paid um, these nut processors are sales agents they're in fact buyers they buy your nuts from you and so it's reasonable i think at least from my own perspective to know what you're going to be paid for them because the nuts change hands, that is the legal property in the nuts changes hands to the nut processor the moment they receive your nuts. Um, but uh, a notional price is a bit different and um, I don't want to force any fine print onto you because that's going to make the most boring video ever. But I thought I should show you what some definitions of notional price are based on and they're all based on something like this one. I've removed the name of the particular company to um, to keep their confidentiality but what it says here is that the notional price is a price based on normal crop conditions with normal yields and based on a combination of market conditions exchange rates yada 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 um, to the 2022 crop and at the bottom of it says importantly the notional price is indicative only and the nut processor is not bound by it now, all of the agreements based on notional price say that the price that is given to the grower can be changed either to the discretion of the directors or the discretion of the company. And while some suggest that it can be discussed with growers beforehand, basically the sole discretion to change the price that growers are paid after they've already delivered their nuts is in the hands of the nut processor. And that's that's a pretty confronting kind of deal. Now, up until last season, um, no one really worried much about notional prices because if a grower didn't keep the notional price and and then cut it on their growers, um, that was regarded as basically commercial suicide for any nut processor who did it. Um, however, there was one last year, and it was only one, that um, cut the notional price from $5 down to $4.30. Now you might, I mean, look, apart from the outrage that that caused amongst the growers um, contracted to that particular processor, you might wonder, well, how that, how does that work? Because um, you don't get all your money at the same time when you deal with these nut processors. Some will give you full payment within 30 days which means there isn't much chance for a notional price to change in that time. Um, but others offer a payment period over quite a long 
period of time. Now, the particular nut processor that changed its price um, operated on a schedule that looks like this. Here's the payment schedule. So they'll give you 50% of your crop. This is sort of as measured at 10% moisture and standardized out and the, any bonuses applied or you know they calculate it based on the sound kernel recovery. The, all these things have an effect on the price which you are told about. So you know about those effects on the price, but not the notional effect. So you're meant to be paid 50% within 30 days, 5% at the end of September, 5% at the end of October, November, and then there's a remaining balloon payment, which is delayed right out until March the following year. Now, by March the following year, your nuts are starting to drop for the next season. Um, and um, so that's a very delayed payment schedule. Um, what happened in the last year is this particular nut processor paid the notional price on the 50% on the three installments of 5%, but it was that final installment where they finally came out just before the installment was due and told the growers, well, based on this final installment, we're now gonna pay that final installment at $4.30 a kilo instead of $5 a kilo. So it's not like they can sort of claw the money back that they've already paid you, but they, um, reduce the price of the final instalment to $4.30. Now, for someone who doesn't have a big crop, it isn't a huge loss, but when you're talking about 70 cents a kilo, um, that's $700 a tonne, basically. Um, that can be a lot if you've got a lot of tonnes. Um, and, you know, so, you know, in a 100 tonne crop, all of a sudden, you know, $70,000. So some people were very burned by this particular process's use of the notional price to say that no, we're going to reduce that, you know, without notice. Really, there wasn't. There was a, an email earlier in the year to the growers saying, look, conditions are a little bit interesting, but no real hint that the notional price was going to be dropped until it then was. And then the poor growers liaisons had a terrible job of ringing around their farmers saying, guys, I've got some bad news. Uh, particularly because this had never really been done by any processor. The notional prices were there as sort of a, a stopgap, a sort of an emergency out in case things got really bad. Um, but it was only the one processor who did this, and you'd wonder why things were bad for that one processor as opposed to everyone else. Um, so the mechanism by which they do it is these payment terms here. Uh, and it says, at its sole discretion, the nut processor can alter, suspend, or terminate payments, um, including circumstances where, for example, they think, well, based on the progress payments, we think we've already paid you enough because the end price is going to be less than what we've already paid you. So they could even terminate the payments in September, October, November if they felt like they were, they were overpaying for the nuts. Um, and they'll say that they'll discuss changes to payment schedules prior to exercising its right. But, you know, the key provision here, if you're legally inclined, is the without limiting its rights under the agreement. And that is, at the end of the day, and all of the agreements say the same thing. The discretion to change that notional price is purely in the nut processor's hands. So uh, I suppose some of you not in the industry would be thinking, well, why on earth would you agree to a notional price? Um, and it's a very good question. If you had to, if everyone was offering notional prices, then you'd be stuck with it. But these days, there's a lot of fixed prices available and they're not lower prices. I mean, if, for example, someone was offering you a fixed price of $3.80 or in a notional price of $4.20. You might take the $4.20 and think, well, do I feel lucky, punk? You know, and, and then maybe you do feel lucky. And you'll take the $4.20 in the hope that you'll get all of that. Or you could go for safety and say, no, look, I'll take the $3.80 fixed. And um, so you can weigh your risk factors. The um, the difficult, difficulty here is that, you know, particularly this season, the people offering notional prices aren't really offering any premium on top of the ones who are offering fixed prices. And so there's really no reason not to go with a fixed price. 
the one anomaly in the industry in Australia is Marquis. Now, Marquis is the biggest processor of macadamias. They do, I think, a, a nearly half of Australia's macadamia crop just by themselves, and they're grower-owned. They've always had notional prices, but in the past, um, they've they've actually exercised the notional price in favour of the growers because they're not for profit. So. Um, a couple of years ago, they were paying $6 a kilo notional. The final price that they ended up paying growers was in fact $6.20, and they made a bonus payment to growers. When you're dealing with a private company, they never have, uh, to my knowledge, adjust the notional price upwards and given more money for growers. They've always pocketed the change themselves. Uh, and so that's why many growers do like to grow with a grower-owned cooperative, uh, or they're not technically a cooperative, but a grower-owned company, which is designed to basically put the grower first rather than um, rather than the corporate interests of the owners. So there's, there's the pricing models that, that we do. And, and the only other sort of things that sort of factor into the pricing is when you get paid for it. Um, I've seen models that range from payment within 30 days um, to payment within 90 days, 120 days. Um, there's a couple of processes that even offer a sign-on bonus so that as soon as you promise them a certain amount of nuts, um, they'll give you a payment based on the promise that you make and and you and you make um, you get that in in terms of um, uh, an upfront payment. And they deduct that off your further payment. You don't get any more from that. It's just a matter of sort of front loading the fact that you're promising, them a certain crop. Now that can be a little bit inaccurate because you've got to give them an indication of how much you're going to supply them. Um, and that can be tricky, particularly in a season like this, you can't necessarily say, I'm going to give you 20 tons of nuts. They just say, look, give us your best guess. Um, they can give you an upfront payment of that. And it comes out in the adjustments later, depending on how much you actually supply. Um, so which one to choose? Well, look, it depends when you need your money. It depends which financial year you would like to be paid in. Uh, obviously, the upfront payments are paid in the current financial year that the crop starts falling. Uh, and the other payments sort of tend to come in after the end of financial, uh, after the end of financial year. And all of those things are things that, you know, not growers can take into account. I guess the only thing they can't really do is is you know change the price from a bad one to a good one in uh, in in bad years. Um, each of the processes for their point have to set a price which they think they can get in the market for themselves, give themselves a reasonable profit margin and um, and and hopefully uh, not do the dirty on the growers on any notional price. Um, it remains to be seen whether the particular nut processor who um, so-called did the dirty on its growers last season uh, will will suffer a bit of an exodus this year. Um, you know, a lot of people have very long-standing associations between growers and processors, but um, certainly from my own point of view, uh, to use the notional price against the grower rather than absorbing the loss yourself is is a little bit unfair on the grower. Just, you know, in, in terms of my own legal thinking, you've got a price for your nuts. They own your nuts as soon as they've shipped them. And for any company to decide later what they're going to pay you for them uh, or to go back on their, their word and change it to something else. Yes, it's allowed in the contract. I'm reading this fine print here and it's absolutely all allowed. But is it good business? Is it good relationship building? Is it good partnership? Um, no to all those questions. And I think you've you've really, you know, as, as a nut grower, got to look at that. Um, it's particularly important in a year where the price is low anyway. Uh, you wouldn't want it falling any lower than that if things go bad, uh, because it's already pretty bad. So, you know, I suspect this particular season, there'll be a lot of growers going for the certainty of a fixed price. So, you know, they'll say, look, it's a crummy price, but at least we'll get that, um, rather than rather than subject themselves to further risk, um, particularly when those companies offering a notional price are not offering a higher notional price than the fixed ones. So that's what every grower has to decide each season before the nuts um, get picked up. 
you've got to work out where to send them because they'll send you out a contract and once you signed on to that contract those are the terms you're bound by so i hope that gives you a little bit of insight in how uh, growers deal with their nut processes and what kind of pricing and payment deals are available when you do uh, undergo that exercise thanks for watching guys i'll be back on the farm again soon and be able to give you a nice big update from what is still a fairly wet uh, a wet harvesting condition but um, look forward to showing you what i've got then bye for now